since one of our best t uh, re pre reading strategies is predicting, you get your brain kind of warmed up to what it is you're going to be reading about. Thinking about that title, raise your hand to share with me what do you, what do you think it's going to be about? Sarah? Something about Egyptian times. Okay, and so what, how are you getting a clue about that? Because there's little symbols on the front cover above his head. Okay, so Sarah's cluing in on the details uh, up that are going kind of like a border to the illustration of Omar's face and that she's remembering that that might have something to do with Egyptian culture. So she thinks that the setting's going to be in Egypt. Ayana? Since we were talking about um, obstacle engineering um, and almost time to shine, maybe he's going to like make um, uh, a kind of... He's gonna, first he's going to do the uh, axe and that imagine plan and create and prove and then yeah. he's going to probably, I guess, show it to the world. Okay. So let's see what that has to do with our second question. Have you ever been in a play or a performance? What was it like and what was your part? So raise your hand if you've ever been in a play or a performance, something presented to an audience or on stage. Good. So congratulations. Your own personal experience is going to have some uh, influence on your understanding of what Omar's going through because now you've getting that, you're getting that new piece of information about what's going to be happening in the story. Who would like to share what that experience was like and what their part or their role was in that performance or play? Uh, Abigail. I was in the play Oliver and I was an orphan, one of the orphan kids. Okay, and what was that like? I was kind of like scared to be in the, in front of a big crowd of people. Scared like terrified or scared like scared excited? Like excited. Scared, excited. All right. And then lastly, before we finally get into the book, um, thinking about yourself and what you know about your own personality, would you want to be the star of a performance? Why or why not? Give me a thumb up if you say yes, that you would want to be the star of a performance. Give me a thumb down if you definitely say no, that's not for me. And give me a sideways if you're not sure. If you're kind of undecided if you would want to be the star of a performance, give me a sideways. Michael, why not? Because I'd be too nervous. The, so the nerves would get the better of you. You'd be too nerve-wracking. Okay, and somebody who had a thumb up. Sam, why would you want to be the star of a performance? I kind of want to be the star of the performance because the main character is more Okay, so the star is just that, right? The star, so the focus is on them. This is, as you can see in the blue square in the upper right-hand corner of your uh, book cover, optical engineering. And so I was overhearing some people with a little bit of confusion around what the word optical means. And so some people were trying to break up the word. Um, and so you were thinking, well, do I know what optics are? Or op I heard someone using the word option. But I think some people were misunderstanding and maybe in seeing it in print, and you can see that it's OPT. Some people were thinking that I said obstacle. And so you were connecting that there might be something really hard that the student, it's a really hard type of engineering because it's, it's difficult to do. There are obstacles along the way. This optical engineering ties right in with the word shine. Would you turn and tell a person next to you what you think now the word optical might mean if I'm letting you know there's a connection to sh something that shines? They put the word shine in there purposely because it goes along with optical. Like something involving light in it, like we and so a lot of you said that optical engineering must have something to do with light. Right. So before we start reading, I want to see what your schema is. So on the topic of light, what information do you already have about light? Since they made, uh, named it like light bulb, mm -hmm. maybe it can like shine just in case if it's like dark. And Deanna? So I know that some... Light energy comes from the sun. Ariana. I know that light can, uh, if you have something like a mirror or something, it can make a fire. Like uh, if you put it next to the sun, it, it would reflect it and it would make uh, like flames or make it hot Steam. to make it. Yeah. Good. As Sarah had mentioned, she was noti noticing that the details and the drawings that provide that are the border on the front cover of the book. Um, 
uh, lead you to believe that this, the setting of the story is going to be Egypt, and she was correct. How many people have heard of Egypt? Excellent. And so who can share one quick fact, something that they already know about, or when they think, when they hear Egypt, they think? Um, I think of like all like of um, the history that they had there. Okay, they're a country that's much older than the United States, so they have more history than we do, Brian? Pyramids. I think pyramids as well. So we've got all of these things that are tied in with just the fact that it's being set in Egypt. Awesome. So let's now finally open your books up, please, to chapter one, which is entitled Feeling Invisible. I stood in the back row of dancers on the stage, slowly swaying side to side in time to the music. My classmates in the front rows were concentrating hard on the complex steps of the Nubian dance they were performing. Rest. I will see you in a few days for our final practice and performance. So our first question asks, how do you think Omar feels about Ehab mistakenly calling him by the wrong name? I think he feels like kind of like um, invisible, like he, like he doesn't even know his name, and like because he's like in the background and like no one cares about him. Right. So he feels like he, what he's doing doesn't really count. Right. And so Danielle was able to answer, but also reference the text. Nice job. Moving on to chapter two, it's entitled Visiting the Valley of the Kings. That wouldn't be good, I said. Mama was pretty mad when the curtains faded. I bet people would be a lot more upset if those paintings faded. They can't be replaced. So thinking about our question, have you ever noticed something faded by light? What was it and where did the light come from? So I want you to turn and talk. Yeah, I just remember that I was like, it was like a bright, it was like a dark blue, but then it fades like a light blue. Like, that's, so yeah. I think it's caught from the sun too. I mean, I think from Good. How many people said that the light source was artificial light, like light bulbs? How many people said it was the sun's light? Very good. All right, so we've got the difference between natural light and artificial light. Good. Chapter 3, Filming in the Tombs. You're going to interview Zane, I asked. My brother, Zane? If he'll go along with it, Mira said. Great, I said. Zane was going to get to be a star again. So here we go with Omar feeling bad about. And look at his look at his physical posture in his face on page 23. Look at his arms are all down. He's just like, great. It's like the same on page five. Yeah, it's like a exactly. It's like a mirror of what's hap what happened in page Can five. You watch to my book. It looks brighter now, I said. Optical engineers call that intensity. The brightness or amount of light, Zane said, the farther the light travels, the less in intense the light becomes. All right, I'm going to stop for a second before I pick a new reader. So why would that be important? Thinking about the work that Zane's doing, if they're, provide they're making a coating so that the paintings don't get faded by the sun's light, why would the distance from the light source to the painting be something that they would have to know about? Deanna. Because if if it was close enough, then it would already be faded. So they would they would have to find out where the light's hitting and how much it's hitting at the time of day. Good. So um, whether we're talking about natural or artificial light, the amount of light that's that's hitting those paintings is going to affect how quickly it fades. So um, we also have that factor of uh, how long it takes to fade it. Good. Next reader. Us. <coughs> Good. So, what do you think is about to happen? It's about to be what? It's about to be his time to shine. It's about to be his time to shine. And how is he feeling now that he is in the spotlight? Now that he, every, all the focus is on him, Michael. Nervous. He's got, he's got a little nervous. Do you think it's going to be enough? anxiety to make him back down from the challenge? No, because no, he even said to himself, no. now or never. Yeah. Good. Everyone on stage in the, and in the crowd began to clap again, even more loudly than before. I could see Z Zane standing and clapping in the audience. I smiled as I made my way to the stage for a moment in the spotlight. Um, looking up at the screen, I'm going to have you put this title, What We Know About Light. 
And I'm going to give you about six minutes or so for you to have a group discussion. We already did some pre-reading information. We, I wrote down your schema before we read the story about ideas about light. But now that we've got this story as part of our new schema, we just added another few wrinkles, I hope, to our brain muscle. What we know about light should be more detailed and more story-centered. If you need to flip back into the text, is that allowed? Absolutely. That's what good readers do. We always go back into the text. Can you flip from like mirrors? That's what we found out. That's what we found because this was part of the story. It was talking about he had the lamp. The lamp was like right next to him. He had his watch reflecting it. Like see the papers that are reflecting light. Yeah, because they're gleaming. Yeah. You can draw that if you want to. If you look up at the screen, this time I'm not asking you what do you know about light, this time I want to know what do you know of the work of optical engineers. Optical engineers had to know about what intensity was, which is brightness and the amount of light. This is what he knows, the brighter, the closer you are, the brighter it is, and he, the optical engineer calls that inversity, intensity. And then the layers he um, used for his project is like DVD players, microscopes, lenses for cameras, fiber optics, and many other about things. About math, science, and so materials. Um, particularly like, like, mm -hmm. he made coatings for the tools. So the light would make yeah, them disappear. Omar is kind of um, becoming almost an optical engineer because since he was learning about all the things they need to do, and then he um, thought about the idea with, with um, using mirrors to shine so they can still do the performance. And I think you guys did an awesome job today, and I'm really proud of the work that you got accomplished. Um, the optical engineering unit has to be one of my favorites because I really feel like the kids, at least with the students I've had here at this school that I've worked with with that unit, that they really feel for Omar and that whole performance thing, and, and, but they can feel either side of who'd like to be in the spotlight and who wouldn't, even if it's set in a different country or a different, um, a different part of the world, a different climate, a different environment, whatever it might be. The stories are written in a way that the kids can connect to that child who's the main character because of um, a problem that they're going through or the way that they're feeling as they're going through it. And it's all very well explained to the students that this isn't just some fictional kid, but that this could be something that they might find themselves in, whether it may never be an Egyptian tomb. It could certainly be another situation where the lights go out and what do you do? And so um, I think that they can all connect text to self um, and find that they're in some way similar to that child. In fifth grade, some students still have some problems with risk taking that they don't always want just to jump out and throw their ideas in the ring. They want to have some backup. So starting off, not so much slowly, but starting off through and working through somebody else's experience, if a student's able to say, well, I think I would try this, and another kid says, well, why would you do that? And they can say, well, Omar in the story, blah, blah, blah. Then they can kind of blame Omar. Mm -hmm. And then if it's wrong, they'll go, well, that's what Omar did. And this way it takes the, the onus off them. And so we get into a bit of a, especially this part of fifth grade, all of that kind of social stuff. And so they don't really want to be going out on a limb without knowing where everybody else is. So being able to not so much blame Omar, but have a story to kind of back up and use as evidence for why they're thinking along those lines it provides them some, some support.